All right, so I'm recording now. Let's just check this just to be sure. Oh, no, it stopped. All right, let's record it. Built-in microphone. Okay, we're good. FaceTime camera. We're good. Okay, so if you're not on the website, um, this is the website, elizabethpampalone.com forward slash WordCamp if you want to get the slides. Um, the slides are here in, like, image form. And then if you want to download the presentation later, um, later today, I'll put that up. And I will be in the happiness bar the rest of the day. I'll probably stay until about 2 or 3 because i got to drive back to Cincinnati. So if you want to talk to me about anything, you want to chat about anything, I'll help you with your stuff. Just let me know. I'm here. You're basically getting me today for free, so take advantage. Um, and then uh, the slides and links will be all on this page. And then there's also a link to get Divi, which is my favorite builder, which we'll talk about at the end of the slideshow. But we're going to talk about quite a few others and why you would use a builder. So... I actually have been a website designer for about 18 years. Thank you. Um, and I love it. I, I grew up doing this, and I just love everything about WordPress, what design websites, helping people discover who they really are and putting that kind of like on paper but in a website. And I love solving people's problems. And when I started with WordPress, I felt like I was, well, I was coming from coding in Notepad, so that was a pain. And then I started with WordPress thinking, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Well, as I started to do more and more WordPress sites, I started to see that I had to pick a theme that worked with the client and worked with their industry well or looked good for them. And then I would have to learn that theme over and over and over. It was like starting a new job every time I got a new client that needed a different theme than one I already worked with. And then I started trying to put clients into one theme, like picking a really good solid base of a theme and I used blue chic themes for quite a while. I actually mentioned them yesterday. And they're a really good base theme. They're feminine driven. But if you change the colors, you can't tell. And I really was like, okay, I'm going to put you guys all in blue chic themes, learn them really well. And then I found Site Origin Builder, which we're going to talk about. Then I put that on top of blue chic, and I was like, this is amazing. I can duplicate things. I can go faster. And then I found out that there were other builders like Beaver Builder and Divi and things like that. So my journey to go from straight WordPress, working in you know, the regular editor, to using a type of builder that's on top of a theme or that is an actual theme as a builder, um, really allowed me to increase all the productivity that I was doing because I didn't have to relearn it every single time that I tried a new theme. And I also didn't have to spend time looking for a theme. How many of you have spent hours looking for themes? It's a nightmare. It's awful. OK. So. Um, we don't want to waste our time or our money. Sometimes themes don't even have, um, you know, like you can't even demo it. Like you can see it, but you can't play with it. How do I know that those controls are going to be good to work with? How do I know I can get to the things I need to get to? How do I know, you know, as a, like a, let's say a non-coder, if I hand this off to a client, how are they going to be able to manage it and edit it when I can't even find stuff in it? So it's sometimes you have to kind of buy it before you try it. And I feel like that's silly with a lot of the themes. So a lot of the ones I'm going to show you today actually have demos, and I'm going to put those links in the chat for you guys. So I looked up those stats before I left, and this is what it told me. So I don't know if it's exactly correct, but I'm going with it, um, that 19% of the web is run on WordPress. And that's a lot of WordCamp people. <laughs> and if you have, if you know, this is your first WordCamp, welcome. We're so glad you're here. You'll be addicted. Don't worry. Um, but that's a lot of people that are running WordPress, and that means there's a lot of opportunity for people to build themes, but at the same time, it's a lot of opportunity for bad themes and just crappy themes that just don't work. Um, and that can really confuse you when you're trying to find something. So the reason I really like the builders is because it's a theme and plugins and all the builders all in one piece. So the theme you have controls some of your functionality, typically, and it might contain a builder with it, but it controls pretty much your visual aspects of your site. Your plugins are really your functionality piece. They're what make things happen. They're the pieces that are going to lock together to make a website functional in a, in a full sense. And sometimes a builder can be just a plugin, which is that functionality piece. But when you have a theme that is a builder, 
You get all of that in one piece and you don't have to go hunting around for a plugin that does this or a plugin that does that. Yesterday I mentioned duplicate post and duplicate page. Those are two plugins that I like to use when you're using certain themes that don't let you duplicate things. With a builder, typically most of them, you can duplicate any page or any post you want, even save it as a template for later and then use it again and just edit it, change it, whatever. So then you don't even need those two plugins. You have, this is already doing it for you. And if you have any questions, just um, stop me and we'll answer questions. So a builder saved me 30% in design time because all my tools were right there. I didn't have to go out hunting for them. And when I was editing and, and just redesigning things, 50% of the time was saved. Because I'm not going back going, okay, now the client wants me to do X. How in the world do I do that? And the other thing about builders is they have a huge community behind them. Um, they are driven by community because people kind of glom onto them, and then they bring their friends, and then they bring their friends, and it's like a wonderful pyramid scheme of builders. And so then you have all these people that have done all this cool stuff with the builder that you might not have even thought possible. And I know yesterday in the 201 class, yes, the second portion of the day, he was talking about how to write your own plugins and how to do it really quick with code you might pull from somewhere else. Well, a lot of the times with a builder, you're using CSS. And that can be really complicated to write if you're not familiar with it. So um, one of the people that I follow is Gino. He actually is one of the Divi, kind of top Divi people. And he will do, he does a blog. And he will just go through and say, hey, do you want to change one of your menu items to a button? Here's the CSS code. And then you can basically use it and tweak it and learn from it. And he actually did a code set that had the wrong padding. The button was like off-centered. And I was like, Gino. So I fixed it for myself and then saved it in note my notepad because I wanted to make sure I had the good code. But it was one of those things that, you know, he did it for me and then I used it and I tweak it and I use it all the time now on many different in many different areas of the website. So there's, the builder will really save you time because all these people have done this for these builders. They've learned them really well or they've adjusted them. And you could just go out and Google it and find it like almost immediately. And it's simple code. It's not necessarily like you're trying to do a function or anything. You don't have to write a function. You're really more using CSS to manipulate it, to adjust it. Um, so it's a little bit simpler when you're looking at a design from a design perspective. Builders can be anywhere from free to a lot of money. <laughs> And some of them have lifetime subscriptions. If you try a demo of one and you like it and you think, I could use this, this could work for me, just buy the lifetime, just do it. Because I actually didn't have a Divi demo before I purchased it. There wasn't one out there when I bought it. And I actually just bought it sight unseen, lifetime. And they even say on their website, we don't refund you. <laughs> I was like really scared. But I did it anyway, and I let it sit in my, in, in my um, files for like two, three weeks. I was too scared to touch it. I didn't know. I was like, well, I got it now. I can't do anything. You know, I got to either use it or not. But I started using it on the next client site that I was building, and it was a learning curve. Had to learn that one too, right? But that's what I was always doing, relearning a theme, relearning a theme. And once I actually got into it, and I started moving things around, and then the second site I built... Oh my gosh, it was so much faster. I was like, well, I really like this piece that I used on the other site. I'm going to bring that over and change the colors and change the font or whatever. Um, or I'm going to use it at the bottom of a page instead of in a column or whatnot. And it really allowed me to say, a client to say, hey, I saw a website you did, and I really liked how this looked or how this functioned. I could go back to that site, pull down the piece I needed, go to my new site, upload it, tweak it, and I'm done. I'm not redoing the whole thing. Have you ever had something you've been working with, let's say it's a form you're filling out, and it doesn't let you autofill? How many people think that's annoying? Where you're like typing it in and then you have to fill it out again? Sometimes WordCamps use the same form and they don't do like paper call or something, and they're like, fill this form in 20 times for how many ever times you want to, you know, submit a talk. And it doesn't autofill. It's the worst. It makes it so frustrating. But this is like autofill for a website. You've already built it. You've already done it. You just bring it over, change the things that need to be changed, and use them again. The other thing about the lifetime ones um, are their unlimited uses, typically. So you have to look at the licensing agreements. But with Divi, I'm able to pass it on to clients as I work with them. 
And um, because I'm paying for the lifetime subscription, there's licensing things about that. You can also get it yearly. Um, you can pay, you know, with things like 89 or so dollars a year, maybe 100. Um, but you can basically know that when you put a client on something like Beaver Builder or Divi or whatnot, and they go away from you for some reason, which I like to release clients, I don't like to hold them hostage, then you know that there's this community that can support them out there. You're not just letting them go and just being like, all right, see ya, good luck with that site I built you because it's all custom and have fun. You know, it's something that they can go out and say, hey, I'm going to go into this Facebook community or I'm going to go to a WordPress community and I'm going to say, hey, does anybody know how to use this? And like 10 people are going to know. So it really gives me, um, you know, more peace of mind that I'm, when I build something for a client in a builder, I'm giving them a little bit more of a head start um, because they're still not going to be able to build it from scratch. Like they're not going to know all that stuff but I'm at least going to be able to give them kind of a head start in that, where it's going to be a little easier for them going forward. And I, I really love working with builders, and so once you go and you kind of take the step to the dark side on that, then you'll really, I think you'll find that it's a lot better than maybe the process you've been using in the past. Now, some people really like Beaver Builder, and I find that more developers like Beaver Builder better because it's more expandable. It's not heavy with code. Like, they have all these terms they like to use, and that's fine, but you have to find the builder that works for you. Divi is more of a designer's builder. It's more about the pretty things and the, the waves and the shortcut pieces you can use and the icons and all that stuff and how easy it is to change this and that. And so really looking at them all and trying them all, like I said, with these demos, it's going to give you that sense of what works for me. Because when I say Divi and I'm like, you should use Divi, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you as well. So you need to try all the ones that I'm recommending and even other ones that are out there because these aren't all of them. So there are elements of a builder. I like that there's grid elements, there's blog elements. Um, when you're looking at them, evaluate the pieces you use all the time for clients. I use the blogging elements a lot. Um, I like that I can download pieces of Divi and re-upload them somewhere else. A lot of the builders do that. And then, like, this one has, like, a chart thing and the number counter. I like that. Um, also, this one has, like, background video and stuff like that. Initially, most builders didn't do that, but now most of them do. So um, that's, you know, an element that I really liked about Divi when I first started using it. Divi has a drag-and-drop editor. Most of them do. They also have a visual editor. Most of them do. So keep those things in mind as you start to play with different ones and look through different demos. There's time-consuming functionality that can be done custom-coded that Divi does automatically by itself. Um, I love using background video in my headers. And then what about mobile, though? It's going to be harder on mobile to have a background video. It's going to load slower. And so what I've done with Divi, which I really like, and I think Beaver Builder does as well, is that you can basically say, on desktop, show this. On mobile, show these. So you're really customizing it based on what's going to work best. Um, whereas if you're just building straight responsive and you're not doing a lot of custom coding, you basically say, here's my photo, and then the, you know, the responsive code res resizes it whichever way. You might get this of a woman you know, on a page, and on the website it looks like this, but then she's like this, and that's not great. You, know, you want her face in the center or whatever. And you can really adjust that on Divi. You can also adjust the size of the photo or even have a totally different photo um, than your header is on your main page on the desktop versus what you see on a you know, tablet versus what you see on a um, phone. So I like that about the builders is that you have more flexibility when it comes to responsive design. Because I know you guys have probably been to a website or even built a website where it looks great on the computer, on your screen, and then you get to another screen, and you're like, crap, now I have to go fix it. Because it's all messed up, or it looks funny, or the client's like, why is my face cut off? Why is my hair cut off? You know, stuff like that. So you can really just go in and resize the photo exactly the way you need it and say, only show this on mobile, only show this on tablet, or only show this on, you know, desktop. So I love that about the builders is those kind of functionality that would take you more time in CSS coding normally to do all that responsive stuff. It's done kind of automatically. They also have a lot of third-party integrations. There's a lot of social media platforms that integrate. Um, they have, you know, like instead of getting an Instagram display plugin, some of them have Instagram display widgets that are just built into the theme, built into the builder. And you don't have to go out and find these extra plugins that may break, that may, Instagram may say, oh, we're not doing that kind of API anymore. Usually the paid builders, they're on top of that stuff. They have 
hundreds and hundreds of thousands of users and they can't have their Instagram plugin breaking as part of their theme. That means the theme is broken. That means someone's gonna say, well, forget this, I'm moving to a different one. So they have to really be on top of that and I find that the paid ones are a little more kind of paying attention to those things ahead of time, whereas some of the plugin builders, they're just building it for themselves and they may not update it for years um, and it may break. They have a lot of mail services that are integrated, so their mail blocks are already done. You don't have to go get code from your mail, you know, MailChimp or whatever, and bring it in and then paste it in and then make sure it's responsive and all that. Um, a lot of times they'll, they'll have a block that just says, sign into your MailChimp account. Which, which list do you want to send this to? And it's done, it's integrated. Um, and Divi specifically works really well with WooCommerce. I really like the way that it looks, even just kind of out of the box. You don't really have to do much with it. Um, the cart button appears and everything. So you know when you have Divi or when you have um, WooCommerce, you're trying to find a theme that fits WooCommerce. Maybe it has to be a WooCommerce theme. And then you have to kind of sort through all those. But then they're really shop-centric. With this, with builders, you can actually do a great blog, a great e-commerce store, and a great website all in one without having to find a theme that only really caters to one or the other. Questions? <clears throat> no? Okay. You must be doing a great job. Uh, you can also create landing pages with Divi, which um, I really like. So let me, um, let me pull this over here. because We're going to look at this for a minute. Um, and this landing page I did for uh, a website that I was doing, it was actually a group that I had started, and Jacksonville Networking Guide. Do you see any headers on that? Like any menus? There's no menus. It's in my website. It's mm -hmm. in a Divi built website. But Divi has an option, and a lot of the builders do, that says, remove the header and footer. I don't want to see them. You know those lock pages? I don't really like landing pages because it's like, ha, I got you. You can't go anywhere now. Uh, you have to use the back button. Um, but in this case, I wanted to send people here just to this page. It was elizabethpampalone.com forward slash, you know, Jacksonville Landing or, you know, whatever. Jacksonville Networking Guide. And so I wanted to send them just to that page, but I didn't want it to look like my website. And a lot of the builders let you kind of strip away the website nest of your website and really build a true landing page. And this was a really long sales page as well. Um, so, you know, it had lots of elements and had, you know, the testimonials and those, this, you know, sale buttons and all that stuff. Um, but it was that way that you could just say, I don't need another product, I don't need another plugin. My builder does this for me, and all I have to do is say, no headers, no footers, and it just works. And if anybody wants to know, this um, photo is actually a website that I use. Let me show you guys. I use this for all of my um, portfolio stuff. It's called M. MI.responsivedesign.is and I love it because it's got all these little elements so it's got all your pieces and um, go to this website and see what it looks like so it shows you what it looks like on all of the different sizes and then so for my portfolio typically I just like to see a desktop and a mobile I don't really need to see the other two pieces so what I do is I swipe these out just drag them off. I move my phone over here. And then I do this nice little feature. And I just take a photo of it. And that's for my portfolio. Now this is my portfolio page right here. What do you think? And I stick that in my website and it's done. I don't have to screenshot anything. I don't have to go and like find a you know, screenshot or whatever. I just do this and then everybody's like, oh, I can see what it looks like on desktop. I can see what it looks like on mobile. And then I can send them a link to this, you know, this link can be, this photo can be linked to the site so they can actually see it um, or whatever. But this is how I do the portfolio shots. It's just a real quick, easy way. I just wanted to show that with you guys really quick. Um, but yeah, these are a pretty cool way of um, setting that up. So if you like this, this look, that's how I do it. But it's am I responsive design? Actually, let me just put it in the <laughs> I'll put it in the chat for you guys. It'd be way easier. All right. Um, okay, so that's that. Let's go to the next part here. Um, we're gonna look at a couple of the builders. These are the ones I'm gonna go through. I might not get to all of them, so um, I have the slides for you guys. And I'll have the links. We're gonna start with Beaver Builder.
So this is the Beaver Builder demo. And I'm hoping all of these work correctly. Um, so this is kind of a back end of what Beaver Builder looks like. And if you're if you're a Beaver Builder user, it might not be exact because, like I said, this is a demo, so I have some limited features. Um, and I'm not as familiar with it as I should be probably because I don't use it all the time. Uh, I use Divi the most of the time. But you can see how easy it is to edit this um, if you want to. So I can just come in here. Um, I can double click it and I get this menu. Or I can actually just click on it and, you know, put whatever I want in there um, and save it. I can also... Uh, move it around. I can go back into this little thing and change the style. Maybe I want this to be red. Um, and maybe I have a color code that I want to use. So let me look up um, oh, gold. And I've got this gold right here. So I'm going to put that in. So now it's gold. Um, and then... Let's see what else do I got. Got my font, so I can change this. Um, I can change my size. So you can see it's really, really simple to change this, uh, you know, just by going in here and just looking at all the options. It's not, you know, rocket science, really. That's why I like the builders, because it just gives me all the options. You know, I don't have to really do anything to learn this. I can kind of, it's intuitive enough. Um, Let's pick a different font. There we go. And I don't like this color, so I'm going back to black. Um, so does that make sense for you guys? Like, it's this is Beaver Builder specifically. This is their front-end development. Um, and then, of course, you've got your save. I can add different elements. These are all my blocks. I've got uh, different columns I can use. I've got rows I can add, different columns. I've got some templates. I could just add a whole template if I needed to. And then if there's any saved stuff, like I've saved a row that I like, like this sliding, um, you know, thing for, like, uh, testimonials. I really like this row. I can save this row. Show you that. Pretty sure it's in here. Save as. And I'm going to say um, it's not a global one. You don't want to save it as global unless you want it to be the same on every single time you use it. kind of makes it like um, I'm going to save it, and then I'm, if I change it, it changes it everywhere I've used it. I'm going to save this, and if I go in here, I've got row one, and I can drag them in, and now I've got two of them. So see how easy that is? Like, if I make something and I like it, I can save it and use it again and again and again. Now, global stuff, I like to use global for stuff like this. This is my footer. I'm not going to change that. I want that to be the same on every single one. If I change the address, I want it to change on every single page without it being in a footer area, like in the dashboard, right? So I can essentially save this as a row. I'll say footer. And I can save it as global so that every time I use it, it puts the same piece in. And if I change one piece, if I change the address, if I change the logo, if I add different link to my social, every single time I've used that across my site, it will change automatically because it's global. It means it's once and done, right? So that's Beaver Builder. What do you guys think? Okay, right? It's pretty good. Like I said, it works for some, works better for some people and not as good for others. Just depends. Let's go ahead and look at Themify. Um, this is a video. Um, I'm actually just going to pull up the link and I'm going to put this in the chat for you guys too. Um, we go. This one is just the, let me go back here and get the video. <coughs> they didn't have a demo for me. Maybe I just didn't find it, but they, I couldn't find theirs. And here's the link for the video. So we'll just watch a little bit of this so you guys can see what it looks like. So they're working on this right here. They're looking at if they're going to do some different transitions and animations on it. Uh, scroll speed, visibility. Like here's again, desktop, tablet, mobile. They're choosing which one they want it to show on. Um, 
And again, these boxes are pop-ups. This is very much, um, you know, pretty much a standard across a lot of the builders. You get these pop-up boxes so that you can see what you're doing, but then they go away and you can see your whole design again, um, which I like. And they integrate with the WordPress pieces like the, the media library and stuff like that. All right, let's go out of this. Um, all right. This one I would recommend watching the video. It's about 10 minutes um, if you're interested in the Themify Builder. Does anybody use Themify? No, you said you did. You do? Okay. Um, and talk to these guys because they use it. So talk to somebody who uses it on a regular basis. Ask them what they like about it, what they don't like about it. And then talk to other people about the other ones and ask them what they like about it, what they don't, and see where those pros and cons fit. Because some of the cons for someone else, you could be like, eh, it's not a big deal. I don't use that. Or, no, it's, I can live with that. So it just depends on you know what you're looking for and how you're going to use it, what kind of clients you have. Okay, let's go through next one here. Yeah. Oh yeah, in the chat. Um, this is elizabethpampalone.com forward slash wordcamp. And I'm just putting the links in there so you guys can go back to them or if you want to look at them now. And I'm um, just showing you these little demos. So this is the, let's see here, make me do this every time. Oh no, I did this the other day. <laughs> Yep, okay. Let me go back to my email and do it. I might have to skip this one. I might have to skip to the next one. Because I've only got so much time. Okay. Well, how much time do I have left? Timekeepers. Do I have 20? Timekeepers should know. All right, so I'll come back to that one if, if I need to, but we'll look at this one first. I've got like three more here, too. All right. Let's look at this one. Don't you just love live stuff? Put this in the chat for you guys. Oh, this one, that's right, this one doesn't have one either. But this is um, a, an image that I found of this specific builder. So this is Live Composer. And they're doing the same kind of thing now where they have those modules and they have the drag and drop. Um, and then I like that they have this bottom bar where it's kind of like always there and you can add different pieces that you use often. Like it's kind of like your most recent blocks that you've used. Um, it's a little different than some of the other ones. But um, this one actually is them designing for specifically mobile. And so like I said, you have those mobile pieces. And I don't think you should ever really design separate pieces for each of them, but you should at least have it in mind that you're paying attention to each piece as you design so you're not getting into something where you're like, okay, now, you know, I've built this great site, but it looks horrible on mobile or it's all cut off or whatever. Um, and what he talked about in the keynote about like accessibility, paying attention to the spacing on mobile and stuff like that. The more white space you have, I feel like the better. Um, even if I have to scroll more, it's fine. I want bigger buttons on mobile. I want clearer things. Double columns on mobile is almost like why? Like my phone is small enough already. I don't need two columns of stuff. Um, so that kind of stuff, those kind of design elements, you have to just pay more attention to when you're designing for desktop. It's fine. Three, four columns across, even six. But when you go to mobile or tablet, you have to really kind of look back at what you're doing and make sure that the responsiveness is happening properly. Um, the other thing I like about builders is when you do columns on desktop, sometimes you can go in, depending on the builder, and you can actually say, this column is first. This column is second, so that the mobile responsive will actually put it in the correct order. Sometimes you have a picture, like I like to do this, um, the staggered pictures. So I have like text, picture, picture, text. Like So they're staggered, right? But then on mobile, you want it to be picture, text, picture, text. Otherwise, you have picture, text, text, picture. And it looks funny. It's like, wait, where'd the other picture go? And it's at the bottom. And then you have another picture next to it. So it kind of makes it uneven. It doesn't look right. And so in builders, you can actually say, this picture is first, this text is second, this picture is third, this text is fourth. But on your computer, like when you do a desktop version, you get that same staggered look. You're just putting an order to them so that it doesn't look weird on mobile. Yes? Uh, 
Um, it will not automatically fix it on, the, on some of the builders. Um, it gives them an assigned random number. Um, it will put it in the order that it thinks it should go in. So you're basically saying, it's not necessarily numbers per se. It's not like one, two, three. It's more, um, you know, this should come before the next element. Um, like the picture and the text, you're saying this one's first, this one's second. And then the next row or the next, you know, area, this one's first, this one's second. So it's more per like row, I guess. And in that case, I would have sec separate rows just so that they flow properly rather than if it's on the left, it's going to be second. I mean, if it's on the right, it's going to be second. If it's on the left, it's going to be first. So it just depends on, you know, like reading left to right kind of thing. So, um, but you have to play with that a little bit to see. Um, but when I've done it, I always do it in separate rows. And so then they, the rows are in order, but the picture and the text, which one's first, may not be in order. So that's what you need to fix on that. All right. This is the one I really like. I'm going to show this little video. I couldn't find the demo on it, but um, I haven't used this one in a while, but I know that they've been keeping up with it really well. So ever since I got Divi, I haven't, haven't used it as much, but... Um, whoops, okay. Let's do this. So you guys can see it. This is what you can put on top of most themes. So it's actually really easy to add to WordPress. It doesn't really matter what theme you're using. That's why I used it with Blue Chic because they had a really great style and elements that I liked. Um, they get great layouts and great templates. But this really made me, allowed me to take those templates further. This is the back end. It does have a live editor now. Um, but I love the grid. I love that all the blocks are named. Um, they don't have a lot of blocks that are different colors and whatnot. But, you know, like Divi does. But the way, the ease of use of this is kind of like if you haven't ever used a builder, throw this into your site. It's just a plug-in. Play with it a little bit with the current site you have on a, you know, separate page, on a draft page. And this will kind of get you used to that block style. But it's very easy and user-friendly, I feel like. Um, so it's kind of like my little starter builder. Um, but if you like things that are a little bit more, you know, WordPress standard or look, look more like WordPress rather than their own deal, this really integrates with WordPress really well. Um, and it doesn't feel like you're going outside of the norm and saying, I'm using this really big builder that's taking over everything. This is kind of like, let me add this little builder on the side and try it out. They have a lot of widgets and stuff that come with the builder, which is really cool. And again, all these things are stuff that you would normally be paying, um, you know, or getting extra plugins for. And you might find a bad plugin or a plugin that doesn't work with your theme. And this is something that you can really, you know, use sparingly or as much as you want. And it usually works with most themes. Here's the code for these, which I like too. Their code is very simple. Um, it doesn't overload it. It's not as heavy as Divi is. It does less, but it's not as it's not as heavy. I also love their um, their little column thing. I use this so so much. It allows you to drag the columns widthwise. Divi actually doesn't let you do that, so it's a little surprising. But um, this specific one does. So if you want a little flexibility with that, it's pretty awesome. All right, anybody pick one yet that they want to try and might try out later? All right, my favorite. Going to run some Divi. And this one actually is a Aspen Grove. So I was going to demo it on one of my sites, and I thought, no, because then you guys can't see it. Like, you wouldn't be able to go to it later. So I found a Divi demo, which I thought was pretty cool. And I've got an affiliate link for if you want to buy Divi, because it's so awesome. All right, so here's, um, we're going to look at one of these. And these are some of the templates that you can, you can actually demo. Um, so there's lots of them in here. Let's see. I really liked this one the other day. So we're going to look at this. Where'd it go? Come on. What? Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's try this one. Oh, of course, my live demo doesn't work. All right, well, we tried. Let's see if this works. I am a member. Silly. Oh, okay, let's, let's log in. Maybe that'll help. It's not autofilling. 
My pet peeve. All right, now let's go back. It's thinking really hard. I think it's working. Yay, it's working. All right. Um, okay, so this is demo 11. Let's look at the uh, front end so we can see what this page actually looks like. Come on, guy. Okay, there we go. All right, let me close all these windows that don't are not necessary. Hold on a second. Okay, so this is what the, the template looks like. I really like it. I like their use of color. I like their use of this um, transparency on the photo. Um, they've used it again here, and he actually slid in a second ago as I was scrolling. Um, I like the full width grid that they use here. So everything's, there's no you know padding or anything there. I like the numbers. So just a lot of the little pieces of Divi that are really cute and work really well for different things. Um, I have a client that does, um, they're a nonprofit and they have like, I work with um, women in like pregnancy and stuff like that and they give away diapers and so we have a counter for how many diapers they've given away so it's kind of funny it's like it's like in the hundreds of thousands <laughs> it just keeps counting and counting and counting um all right so let's look and and you can see also cool things like um you know the menu disappears as you scroll if you get to the top and then as you scroll down it, it reappears so we're going to look at the um editing this page now we're going to look at this as the the grid view um, on how to edit this page on a grid side, which I like to use this sometimes when I need to get to one specific item, one specific area, so that you're not having to hunt for it on the in, uh, visual builder. So these are all the pieces that we just saw, but this is the back end of it. Everything's very laid out, like I said, really straight grid. Um, they have full width, they have standard, these are rows. Um, and then you've got your columns within your rows, and you have fancy columns and rows, which are these. A little bit more fancy um, than what we are using currently in here. So let's go to the visual builder, and I'll show you some of that. Again, we've got these little hover buttons like moving it around, editing it, duplicating it, saving it, and trashing it. So got that kind of stuff. I can add another row here if I need to or another module within that row. Um, everything is color coded, which does help. So the um, rows are blue and the actual columns are green and then the modules are this gray. So everything is kind of nested within itself. Um, this, this is one column, but if we look at the padding on this, I bet it's astronomical yep 157 <laughs> um, and so that's really what's giving it that centered look without having two columns on the side that are empty um, which sometimes can lead to weird things on mobile with it being like having like extra empty space um, if you equalize columns you can do that in here so and also gives us um, we got this is a second row see here this is one row it's green um, maybe say one yeah one row and then here we've got another row that's green and it's wider um, this blue is actually the section. So we've got section, row, and then module. So I messed that up first, sorry. And here we've got uh, a module that's this number two. We've got a module that says projects, and then we've got a module that's the text. And then another one that is his picture. And then there's you know no padding here, no spacing here. Um, that's probably set to zero or minus so that it can be below this, this section that's coming next. And then these are set to two columns with you know no no padding, no sections, or no uh, spacing in between. So there's a lot of little things like that you can do with it. So let me look at this real quick. I'll show you. Here, um, it's set to zero so that you have that full bleed. And then in the actual module itself, this is a call to action module with a title, a text, and then a button. And you can see you can change your links here can change the background. I've got all these settings. I can change what the button looks like. I can add in a background to my button. Like a, the color could be a, an image. Um, I can add a video. I can do gradients. I've got um, icons I can use. Let me see if my button has an icon. 
on hover it does, this little arrow. I want it to be a heart. Now it's a heart. See how it's like quick and easy that is? Um, sometimes when you get a theme and it has these elements in it, it actually will be really like limited. So you won't have um, font awesome icons in there. You're gonna have like eight icons. These are the icons you can use. These are the icons we let you use. Or you can go get your own icons and upload them. And then you have to make sure they're sized correctly and they're the right color and all that stuff. This one is red because it says button icon color and the default is red. If I want it to be black, now it's black. I mean, I could put my hex codes in there. These colors right here also, these are the standard colors for your brand. And you set that in Divi settings. So you can put all the colors that you're using for your whole site, all those brand colors. Um, and you can set them up so that every time you go into this part of the builder, your brand colors are there, not all these random colors. And you don't have to keep putting in hex codes over and over and over, which is annoying. Like I said, a lot of the builders have stuff like this. It's just that when I started working with Divi, it's just one of the ones that I just gravitated towards and I've gotten so used to it now. It's pretty much the only one I use. Now, as a business owner and as a website designer that does this for a living, I make people go on SiteGround, you have to use Divi, and I only give you one day. Those are my three stipulations if you want to work with me. Now, that's me. I've gotten really, really specific and I've gotten really specific about the clients that I serve and this works for them. It doesn't work for everyone. I've turned down clients all the time and send them elsewhere because they don't want to use Divi. They don't want to be on site ground. I don't know why. Um, they don't want to only do it in one day. They want me to take six weeks and build this massive, you know, whatever site. I know I can do these things, but for a specific type of client. And what really comes down to is saving time and money and energy, you know, working on a site by using a builder is really helpful. But to get to using it the most effective is when you really hone in on that brand and say, this is who my people are. This is who they're going, this is what they're going to attract to. It doesn't even matter what the design is, but it's like, I know that I could give this to a client and they could figure it out if, I, if they needed to, if they could, didn't have the money anymore to pay me or whatever. Move to another country and they didn't you know, want to connect, still communicate, whatever, it doesn't matter. Clients need to be able to have the ability to say, I want my site back and you can say, okay, here it is and know that they're gonna be okay without that overhanging thing of, well, what's really, really custom and who's your next developer and worrying about them in a sense because that can also weigh on us. I mean, I'm one of those people that, like he said in the keynote, I care, <laughs> probably too much, it's my fault. Um, but like, I want them to be okay if I give this to them. And another reason using a builder is not only it saves me time and me money, but then when they get it, they're like, oh, I feel empowered, I can do this. And they know that they don't have time to do it and that's why they pay me to do it because that's what I do all day. But they also know that if they needed to, I'm setting them up for success in the future. So what do you guys think of builders? You think it's gonna save you time? Like I know you, some of you are already using them, right? But have you think you might explore some different ones now, maybe? Try some out, there's lots of demos. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so the question is to hand off the client. I'm doing this for the video. To hand off the client their own site, um, but maybe teaching them a little and still having them need you, or do you teach them everything and hand them the keys? And that just come down to the client. So um, I love WordPress with all my heart. Like that's why I'm here. I traveled here on my own dime. I'm volunteering. Like I really love WordPress. But at the same time, I've recognized the shift in the market. And I'm going to get to your questions, so don't feel like I'm rabbit trailing. But 
<laughs> like it's coming, it's coming around. Um, but I recognize a shift in the market as well. There's a lot of DIYers who want to DIY. There's a lot of small business owners, and, and if you're serving small business owners, raise your hand because I want to see, like you're serving small, small business, like one-man shops, you know, two to five people maybe even. Those people are very specific and very special. They have two different avenues, as you've seen. They want to say, I can do a little, but I could mess it up, <laughs> and they know that, and they need you. But then there's the other ones who are like, I want to do this myself. I like they're um, entrepreneurs which and you guys are too some of you that's hard you know that that's like you're like I want to do it I'll pour the milk myself I'm four I can do it you know like it's that idea and it's you have to be able to empower the ones you can empower and let the ones go that are just going to make all the bad decisions and then keep the ones that are going to have that reliable that um, vision and that value that says I feel like what you do is way more important and way more valuable than the you know, like I get paid $150 an hour. For me to do certain pieces of that, I, that's costing me more money than to pay someone $50 an hour to do the same thing. For me to take that time that I can now work on my business and make more money, right? I do that with my house cleaner. So, you know, that's one of the things that I try to do is, that's why I do the in a days and I switch to that. It's because I can say, you know what? At the end of this day, you're going to have a website. You're going to know how to run it. You're going to see the every aspect of how it was built. Now, this is me, okay? It's not for everybody. But you're going to see every aspect of how it was built. You're going to know that thing inside and out. Do you know how to put a domain in? Maybe not. Do you know how to set up, you know, um, email with email servers and G Suite and all that? It's pretty easy, right? But they probably aren't going to pay attention while I'm doing that. But they're going to know how to put text in. They're going to know how to move pictures around. They're going to know how to add a page, how to make a post because I'm going to make them do all of that in that day. And then when we're done at the end of the day, and even before we start the process, I say, you know what? What is your lifestyle like? What are you going to do with this site? Are you going to go in here every month and test your contact form? Are you going to go in here every month and check and make sure nothing is just weird? Because sometimes just code breaks. Are you going to go in every month and test your own email marketing form and put your address in and then go into your email marketing form and delete it <laughs> so that you can do it again next month? Like, are you going to do those things? Are you going to go in and update your content? Are you going to go in and add your blog posts and format them correctly and put all the right keywords in? Are you going to find a picture for every blog post you do? Is that part of the lifestyle you're going to have? And some clients are like, this is my life. This is what I'm going to do. They're like, you know, bloggers or they're life coaches or whatever, and their life is pretty much online. So they're on their websites all the time anyway. That's part of their life. I teach them how to do it. I send them off. I'm never going to get them as a client because they want to do it themselves. They want to pour the milk, right? Then there's the clients that say, I'm not really tech savvy, and I know that, so what do you charge? And when, I say, when they say they want me to help them, and I'm like, how long are you going to do this? Is this a three-year plan? Is this a five-year plan? Like, we go into, like, business development because it does come down to that. I don't want to ever put someone in a site that's, like, WordPress when they're like, I'm going to manage it myself. And I'm like, do you know how to do an update? Have you ever had a site break? Do you know how to do a little bit of coding in case you need to? Do you know how to go into FTP? And they're like, uh, then you need someone like me. Well, I can't afford that. Then we're not going to use WordPress. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to set them up to fail. And that's something I've learned over the last 12 years. And that's why two years ago I switched my platform and my whole, my whole business. I just changed the entire business model because I thought I keep setting people up to fail and I keep setting myself up to fail because then I feel bad like the client their business didn't do well or whatever because their website wasn't serving them. And so some clients I put on Squarespace, some clients I put on other platforms, some clients I put on Shopify, some clients I put on WordPress. It depends on the client and the lifestyle going forward. So it really comes down to, is the client gonna be able to manage it on their own? Do they have that ability internally? And some of them say, I've got it. And then you just start rattling off. Every month you gotta do updates. Yes, it can break your site. Do you know how to fix it? Do you wanna, like all that stuff that they don't think about. Somebody asked me they wanted to do a membership site. And they wanted to use WordPress and they wanted to use WooCommerce and they wanted to use WooCommerce subscriptions. It's like, okay, have you ever done customer support? Do you know what happens when someone loses their password? What if someone logs into your site and they can't see it? Do you know about how to clear cash on every single browser? Have you ever gotten an email where someone says, I paid but my credit card didn't go through and now I can't get into my account? Have you ever said, had someone say to you, I'm not going to pay with credit card, I only pay with PayPal, and can you give me an email with an invoice? Like, <laughs> there's like all these weird things that happen that you guys know because you're in 
tech and you get all these questions and you've seen these weird things happen that the client's like, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to run my life coaching business. I want to have my membership and have people pay me lots of money. And that's where it comes down to what's the lifestyle. Okay, then you need a tech person on tap. Do you have two, three, four hundred dollars a month, you know, whatever it's going to cost to run this for you? Do you have someone internally that can run this for you that I can train for you? It's going to be with you for like ever. Not someone that's going to leave in three months, some intern. Like getting them to think about the business implications of having a website, not to scare them, but to set them up for success is my biggest thing. So I never, I never know what it's going to be. So I don't really have a, a process per se, but I really look back at what their business has been, where they're going, and try and make it so that everything I do is about their success. Because if they're not successful, then I'm not successful. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Require it. Just require it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's why I do the, that's why I switched my business model. I was spending, oh, I got time? Oh, man. Okay, well, you can talk to me after. Come talk to me after. In the, I'll be in the happiness bar. So anyway, that's good. We're good. Um, if you have other questions, please come see me, and I will definitely answer them. And if anybody wants to hang around and listen to the questions, you can all join us. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate your attention. I hope it got, you got something out of it.